Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 6. Marlena Shaw, the respected soul and jazz vocalist known for her iconic hit, California Soul, died at the age of 81. Her daughter Marla Bradshaw announced her death on January 20, 2024, stating that Shaw died quietly while listening to her favorite music. Shaw was born on September 22, 1939, in New Rochelle, New York. His renowned music career began in the 1960s. Her influence extended across various genres, including jazz, soul, disco, and R&B. Shaw released 17 albums on eight different record labels over her career, leaving a lasting impact on the music industry. Chess records sparked Shaw's climb to popularity in the 1960s. She released Out of Different Bags, 1967, and The Spice of Life, 1969, under their subsidiary, Cadet Records, which included her classic songs California Soul and Woman of the Ghetto. The tune of California Soul, written by Ashford and Simpson, lives on via samples by musicians such as Gangstar, Stereo MCs, DJ Shadow, and Diplo. Her career with Blue Note Records, which began in 1972, resulted in critically praised albums like As Marlena, From the Depths of My Soul, and Just a Matter of Time. She published Sweet Beginnings in 1977 through Columbia Records. Verve Records, which worked with Shaw in 1987, mourned her death, emphasizing her role in rejuvenating the label with her record, It Is Love, recorded live at Vine Saint. Shaw's death represents the end of an era in soul and jazz music. Her legacy, which lives on through her music, continues to inspire and resonate with both fans and artists. Number 5. Scott Manners, a senior talent agent and the creator of the prestigious talent firm Artists and Representatives, died at the age of 68. On January 20, 2024, Manners died from ALS after a brief struggle in Los Angeles, accompanied by his family. His death creates an enormous void in the entertainment world. Manners was well known for his outstanding talent in recognizing and fostering actors, which he exhibited during his agency's more than three decades of operation. He launched the business as Stone Manners, which later became Stone Manners Solners in 2010, after Glenn Solners joined as a partner. In 2019, the firm underwent another makeover, becoming artists and representatives, reflecting its expansion to New York City and the addition of new partners. Under Manners' leadership, Artists and representatives established a reputation for representing artists who made important contributions to the cultural and artistic environment. Manners' devotion to his customers was not only professional, but also intensely personal, emphasizing the value of artistic integrity and human development. The agency's tribute to Manners emphasized his continuous pursuit of the unattainable, a mindset that inspired him to constantly reach new heights and inspire those around him. His career is also defined by his representation of well-known actors such as Alex Mandel, Reza Salazar, and Kevin William Paul, among others. Many in the industry grieve Scott Manor's departure, remembering him as a talented agent, mentor, and inspiration. His contributions to the entertainment industry and the lives he touched will be remembered for years to come. Number 4. Robert Whitman, an imaginative American artist known for his pioneering theatrical works, died at his home in Warwick, New York. He was 88 years old. Whitman was born on May 23, 1935, in Manhattan, New York City. He was a pioneer in combining visual and sound imagery, actors, film, slides, and props in immersive worlds. His subsequent works used new technologies, such as cell phones, beginning in the late 1960s. Whitman's artistic career began after studying literature at Rutgers University and art history at Columbia University. He was represented by the prestigious Pace Gallery in New York. His theater works were crucial to the 1960s visual arts scene on Manhattan's Lower East Side, with over 40 performances in the United States and overseas. 
His most notable pieces include American Moon, E.G., Mouth, and Prune Flat. Whitman partnered with Bell Telephone Laboratories engineers in 1966 for nine evenings theater and engineering when he developed Two Holes of Water Three, a play that combined technology and live components. He proceeded to experiment with installations like laser sculptures and interactive compositions that included optics and music. Whitman co-founded experiments in art and technology with engineers Billy Kluver and Fred Waldhauer, as well as artist Robert Rauschenberg. This cooperation gave artists access to breakthrough technologies, which led to his participation in the Pepsi Pavilion at Expo 70 in Osaka, Japan. His important shows included the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Hudson River Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, and the Tielska Galleriet in Stockholm. Whitman's accomplishments were recognized with grants such as the Guggenheim Fellowship and the Creative Artist Public Service Grant. Whitman's revolutionary work, notably the integration of technology and performance art, has had a long-lasting impact on the art world. His creative impact continues to influence both artists and spectators today. Number three, Robert Rosenthal, a pioneering psychologist and the inventor of meta-analysis, died at the age of 90. Rosenthal was named one of the top 100 psychologists of the 20th century, and his contributions to the discipline have left an enduring effect. Rosenthal retired from Harvard University and joined the faculty at UC Riverside, where he continued his renowned work. In 2008, he was named a university professor by the University of California system, a distinguished status bestowed upon only 40 academics in UC history. He retired from a full-time professorship at UCR in the spring of 2018, but continued engaged in academia, teaching part-time in UCR's graduate division until fall 2023. In 1968, Rosenthal received international praise for his book, Pygmalion in the Classroom. The book presented the concept of the Pygmalion Effect, sometimes known as the Rosenthal Effect, which proposes that teacher expectations influence K-12 classroom outcomes. This revolutionary work generated not only media attention, but also heated debate and controversy. Rosenthal co-founded modern meta-analysis with statistician Gene Glass, which revolutionized scientific research by combining studies to improve findings dependability. He also helped construct psychological ideas such as experimenter bias and interpersonal expectancies. Rosenthal's prominence in the area of psychology was solidified when he was named number 84 in the 100 Most Eminent Psychologists of the 20th Century, published in the Review of General Psychology, alongside luminaries such as Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Despite his professional accomplishments, Rosenthal is remembered by colleagues for his sweet and unassuming demeanor. David Funder, a colleague at both Harvard and UCR, lauded Rosenthal for his generosity and humility, which are not typically found in academia. Peter Blank, a longtime friend and partner, referred to Rosenthal as a mensch, a person of noble character, emphasizing his remarkable human traits. Rosenthal's legacy lives on through his three children, Roberta, David, and Virginia, as well as six grandchildren. His death is a loss not only to the academic community, but also to those who admired his integrity, generosity, and pioneering work. Number two, Charmian Abrahams, a prominent actress best known for her role as Mavis Hooper in the ATV central drama Crossroads, died tragically at the age of 96. She was struck by a delivery van in Harburn, Birmingham on Monday, bringing an abrupt end to a life filled with theatrical accomplishments Abraham's career lasted decades and included collaborations with legendary actors including Sir Noel Coward, Albert Finney, and Sir Ian McKellen. Her performance in Crossroads, situated in a fictional community near Birmingham, earned her widespread acclaim and respect. Her relatives described her as a much-loved aunt, great aunt, and dear friend to many. At the age of 96, she was characterized as still full of life and energy and fiercely independent. Her abrupt and terrible death has crushed her family and friends, but they cherish memories of her zeal for life and the happy times they spent. The West Midlands Police Serious Collision Investigation Unit is presently investigating the crash, which occurred at 11.40 GMT on Lordswood Road, 
The police are seeking any witnesses and anyone with dash cam footage to come forward as they continue to investigate the tragic accident. Charmian Abraham's influence in the drama world, as well as her vivacious nature, will be remembered with fondness by her family, friends, and admirers. Number 1. Serge Laprade, a diverse and renowned personality in Canadian entertainment, died in Montreal at the age of 83. Laprade, known for his diverse career as a singer and radio and television broadcaster in Quebec, made an unmistakable influence on Canadian culture. Laprade's career in entertainment began after he finished his university studies in social science at the Université de Montréal, where he also studied singing and theatre acting. He began working in the news section of CJMS radio station in the early 1960s. His singing prowess quickly drew the notice of producers, resulting in a string of hit singles. In 1964, his blossoming popularity was recognized when he was chosen Male Discovery of the Year at Quebec's Gala des Artists. Le Prade also had a strong radio presence, hosting a variety of entertainment shows on stations including CKVL, CKC, CKLM, CBF, CJMS, and CFGL. His television career was similarly notable, with spells at Radio Canada, where he presented the game program Le Travail à la Chaine from 1972 to 1979, as well as appearances on Telemetropole and TQS. His dedication to philanthropy was demonstrated by his participation in telethons for the Canadian Cerebral Palsy Association for more than a decade. Laprade even tried his hand at politics, standing as a Liberal Party candidate in the 1988 Canadian federal elections but failing to win. In addition to his television and political work, Laprade's repertoire included a dozen albums and nearly 40 hit songs. He also appeared in three plays, showcasing his versatility and enthusiasm for the performing arts. Serge Laprade, a beloved musician and community personality, will be remembered for his contributions to Canadian culture and charity endeavors.